I'm Dina. And I'm Suzanne. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Rise and Shine It's Hypno Time podcast. With Dina and Suzanne. That's us. <laughs> the purpose of this podcast is to help you along your healing journey. To become the very best version of you that you can be and to create the life of your dreams. We want to give you the tools you need to succeed through personal stories, guided meditations, hypnosis, NLP, and self-hypnosis techniques, as well as interviews with experts in a variety of healing modalities, from energy workers and spiritual healers to chiropractors, acupuncturists, holistic medicine, and much, much more. Yes, and we also want this podcast to be a place where people can come together, share stories, and be reminded that you're not alone. In fact, the healing journey is a lifelong journey, and we are just so thankful that you're choosing us to be a part of your journey and that we have you to be a part of ours as well. And with that being said, let's start the show. I'm ready when you are. (laughs) Hi, everyone. We are so excited because today we've got a very special guest on the show, Dr. J. Douglas Brown, and we're so excited because he has such an interesting line of work and the way that he takes care of his patients. So if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and your work and what you do. Okay, well, at first I was a chiropractor. I practiced chiropractic for about seven years, got bored, (laughs) went back to school, uh, did a neurology, studied neurology, then studied, did a fellowship in neurology and a fellowship in, at the Baptist Medical Center Hospital in in medical neurology. And um, since then, I have gone back again to study functional medicine. So now I incorporate functional medicine, functional neurology. I don't do any adjusting, no chiropractic anymore, because all I do now is the brain. This is entirely my only focus is working with patients with a variety of brain disorders, whatever, traumatic brain injury, CTE, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, um, treatment resistant depression, behavioral problems. These typically these patients with the behavioral problems, they come from you guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because it, when, whenever you see it you'll go okay this is a brain problem this is not i need to get this brain fixed and that's what we look at it we look at the brain rather than we don't do what you guys do i don't even i would never claim to even come close to what you guys do <laughs> because you're getting into the emotional the deep you know the deep feelings what this what was the emotional problem, the, driver, yeah. the trauma? Yeah. What happened? Whereas me, when I look at a patient, we're talking, we're doing an interview. Then we do some special test. I'm looking for the areas of the brain that are not working properly. Um, you, you know, this, I'll be super general here in this setting, but basically In general, the way we look at the brain is left or right. Everybody knows this, right and left hemispheres. Right frontal lobe primarily is about emotional constructs. um, The right parietal lobe sitting right behind it understands the outside world. It's aware of both sides of the body. Left side is where all of language is. There's no language in the right side for almost everybody. Left side is language. It's logical. It's linear thinking. There's mathematics there. There's written sheet music you can read there. You can speak from the left, but the right can't do any of that. It doesn't seem, you might think, oh, well, then the left's more important. Oh, no, not even close. Because the left side, even though it can speak, it doesn't know what any of this stuff actually means in the big construct of life. The right side, that emotional side that can look at a person's face and say, I know how you feel. Deep, deep structure. That's the right side. It understands what it all means. You know, like if I said to the left, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. It'll, it just is words. It's just words. And the right side will go, don't you understand that? Don't you know what that means? Right. You know, but it goes into the deeper part. And that's the, that's why we have that huge piece in the middle that communicates constantly. So they're constantly communicating with one another. And so when I see a patient, that's what I'm looking at. 
That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Who is in there that is not doing their job? Because 80% of what the brain is doing is inhibiting other areas of the brain. So if something becomes disinhibited, it just goes rogue. It just starts firing. And that's why you'll hear of hallucinations, delusions, um, just bizarre phenomenon that you know isn't real. And they know it's not real for that matter, like voices. Mm -hmm. No, but they're coming from an area of the brain that is not properly inhibited. And so we, in my field, we look at those areas that are not inhibiting properly and then formulate a way to make them do that. Whether that be direct stimulation with transcranial magnetic stimulator, or we might use uh, movement, different balance coordination exercises and eye movements are very, very important. As y'all know, EMDR, you know how important eye movement is. So we'll use that in various directions because that fires into the neuraxes a certain way to get it to work. And so that's what we do. And the functional medicine side, that looks at the cells. Okay, now how are the cells, how healthy are they? Right. Does this patient, do this patient have the appropriate vitamins, minerals, amino acids and so forth? Does, are the hormones balanced? Right, so you do all that testing, you do- Yeah, testing. we do all that testing, yeah, <laughs> we have, We have to. And you know, the crazy thing about it, I started doing this. That's my dog. Sorry. (laughs) I started doing this because of um, dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients. We, we couldn't help them with just a physical means. It's impossible. So you got to go, you have to look deeper into the metabolic health of the cell. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I started we were getting great results with Alzheimer's patients. So I thought, you know, I'm going to apply this to everybody. I'm going to just start utilizing this tool of functional medicine, along with all of my brain patients, no matter what. And that's, you know, now, since then we've been getting just phenomenal results. It's just ridiculous. Right. So when you awesome. say you were getting phenomenal results with Alzheimer's or dementia, yeah. Can you actually explain kind of what kind of protocol you were going through that was that was helping you to achieve this? These yeah, results? yeah, yeah. I'll try to explain. Um, so when we see a new Alzheimer's patient, we'll we'll do a test called the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. You've heard of it, where we'll see how see where they're at, see how well they're doing cognitively, and based on that score, we'll determine whether they're accepted as a patient or not. Because if they have gone too far, there isn't anything we can do. Right. We'll give them, you know, we'll give them some things with diet and, and per, get their hormones balanced as best we can to stabilize, but we're not going to reverse them if they've gone too far. So we do all this blood work, which is a lot of blood work initially. Um, full neurological exam. I got to see if their neuraxis is normal. You know, maybe there's a tumor, maybe there's a stroke. You know, we have to look at all those things. We review their MRI of their brain. And from that, if I formulate a plan of getting this patient better, right. how do we make this brain work better? And, and all of the, everything in the body, all metabolically supports that brain. That's really what this body's for. You know, it's all about this, right? Right. right. That's our all it's for. taking direction from everything our brain communicates, right? It's it. Our brain is entertaining itself because <laughs> that's where we live and we use this body to do it. That's a neat analogy. And what, mm-hmm. um, what inspired you to get into this type of work? Well, like I, we talked about a little earlier, um, I was a chiropractor first. Seven years I practiced chiropractic, loved it. Still love chiropractors. They're the best people in the world besides you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I got bored. You know, I, I, I honestly, absolutely honestly, I got bored. You know, in chiropractic, mostly what you're doing is pain. You know, and yeah, there can be some complexities to pain, but it's pretty straightforward. You know, it's like surgery. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward. Everything's, you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you know? Yeah. So that's why I said, you know, I got to figure out something that I can do that I won't get bored ever. And there is nothing more complex than the brain. Right. So it's constant learning, newness. Oh, Oh, my goodness. So what um, about your work 
um, as far as dementia and Alzheimer's goes, um, is different from others? Basically what I just mentioned, like if you go to your, you go to a general neurologist, right? You go in there and he sees you, let's say he sees your mom or your grandmother or your grandfather. Okay. You have dementia, he says, or she says, okay. Then you say, what do we do? The, all they have, the tools to, at their disposal are medicines, right? right? That's it. And I get it. I understand that's, a, that's your training. It's fine. That's your training. But medicines, Aricept, Namenda, and combinations thereof do not reverse the disease. And they might give some symptomatic relief for a little while, but they're not going to change the disease. They're not. And so that's what you're going to typically see when you go to your general neurologist. It, it's just a hopeless situation. And they will all tell you, they'll say, look, this, this medicine is not going to change this. You've just got to get your affairs in order. That's what they'll say. Kind of managing the symptoms instead of actually finding the root cause. And exactly, you. exactly right. It's sort of like, um, and, you know, the new medicines that you're trying to come out with, God forbid, they just passed, they just allowed one, the FDA. That was just a disaster because it makes the disease worse. The, the, the drug that they allowed, I couldn't believe they did it. Everybody's upset about it. Even my medical colleagues, they can't believe they allow that drug to go, but it makes it worse. And so what they've done though, is they're targeting the substances that we see in the brain of a deceased Alzheimer's patient. You know, you've heard of beta amyloid. You've probably heard of tau tangles and stuff. Maybe you have where this, this is the stuff that they see in the brain after they dissect it when the patient has passed. Like, right? like the concussions and stuff, then they go in there. The CTE, yeah, they see that tissue and they go, oh yeah, now we know what it was, okay. Well, they saw this stuff and, and so they started making drugs to target the stuff, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, well, that must've been the cause of the disease, you see, because right. it was right. there and they died and it was too much of that stuff. So it must've be, that must be the cause. Let's fix that, yeah. yeah. Right. And so what we, the mentality there is the way we describe it is like this, you know, you're walking through the woods and you come upon a carcass, right? Mm -hmm. You see maggots on that carcass cause of death maggots. You see how much this is ridiculous thinking, right? right? Right. Rather than understanding that animal died and the maggots came along to decompose it. Yeah. Right. Same thing happens in the human brain during Alzheimer's disease. An inflammatory reaction is occurring in the brain for a variety of reasons. And that inflammation is what causes the accumulation of the stuff we see at death. Yeah, the, or the deterioration, kind of like the brain shrinking and not functioning. It's, it's, it's breaking down. You know, we like to compare the brain connections to bones. In all of us, we have osteoblasts, which are cells that put new bone in, and we have osteoclasts, which are cells that take old bone out. It's a constant process that's going on all the time, which replaces the old bone with new bone to keep good bone in our bodies. It's happening in the brain too. Right. The connections are being broke down and connections are being shored up. Right. For example, it's, there's no reason for you to remember the fifth song you heard on the radio three days ago. That's a useless memory, right? <laughs> right. So, Unless you're going to make some money for remembering it. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> but your brain, the cells of the brain, will, they will go in there and they will literally destroy those connections because they're just that not they're right. nonsensical right. for as it's concerned. They don't have anything to do with survival or anything to do with memories or loved ones or our state. And so they're done away with, but in uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease, because we've got inflammation now and we've got all this other stuff happening in the body that doesn't happen. The buildup of the connections, the shoring up of the connections is far outpaced by the breakdown. Because if there's inflammation there, we got to deal with it, right? Right. And that's what happens. The immune system goes crazy, starts tearing things apart. It's like a bull in a china shop. Yeah, my mm -hmm. mind automatically goes to, with any type of disease, but this is just the way I think, 
is, you know, I want to get to the root cause. I want to see whether diet environment, you know, missing yes. something or, or too much mm -hmm. of something, what is sure. it that is going to make us the healthiest uh, yep. to regenerate, to rejuvenate or recover from whatever it is that we're experiencing. Right. And it's the same with the brain. Yes. So you're talking about maybe going in and seeing, um, how to make those areas that are being, um, that are degenerating or that are, that are dying. How can you bring them back to life or how can you right. help them right. recover? Right. In yes. The That's what we do. Yes. That's what we do with the TMS transcranial magnetic stimulation and the exercise, the various physical movement type exercises that we do with the patient. That's what those are for to right. sure the, to get those built back up. However, gotcha. we still have to address what yep. caused the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that could be from the gut. And I know you guys know a lot about the microbiome and the gut and how important that is. It is. Uh, yeah. Every third brain. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And so we have to check that a lot of times we'll, we will actually test the microbiome of the gut. What's there, what's not, is there parasites, is there whatever we can find that could cause the inflammation. Right, because in, isn't inflammation one of the most destructive things for any area of our body? It is. Any, it is any time that we we're, we're have damage, a lot of times it's uh, surrounded by inflammation or it's that's happening right. because of inflammation. Bottom line, that's what it is. And it could be from, you know, we've, we've got certain categories that we put the patients in, it could be, um, if it's basically just inflammatory, that's one. And there's a sweet, which is obvious, right? Diabetes or type two, typically type two. And then there's toxic, which you guys mentioned earlier, environmental exposures, uh, mercury and amalgams, um, all kinds of different toxicities we can test for. Mm -hmm. It was there. And then, you know, there's, there's what we call trophic category. Trophic would mean hormones. Gotcha. Um, you might wonder, well, you're talking about an old person, right? Who cares about hormones? Well, <laughs> when we first published the research, Dr. Dale Bredesen, when he first published the research that we were all doing together way back in 2014, he did 10 patients. These were the clinical research. He put up 10 patients. One of them was a lady that was 74 years old. She was doing great. She was improving and then plateaued. We went back, looked at her labs, and she had a slightly lower estradiol or estrogen. Right. Well, we asked her OBGYN, would you please put her on estrogen? He's like, she's 74. We're like, well, just humor us. And he's like, okay. So put her on it, and boom, there she goes, takes off. So this 74-year-old woman was suffering from estrogen withdrawal, causing her dementia. Isn't that wow. interesting? And if we had never looked... We would have never known. And that's why we look at so many variables at one time. Now, it's a lot. It is. It's a lot to it. And that's why a lot of doctors don't want to get near this because it's so dang complicated. Because everything's uh, interactive. Everything's connected. Everything yeah. influences everything else. Oh, yeah. You got it. You got it. It's all locked together. And if we don't check it, we're gonna. that's going to bite us. So that's, we this. that's why as we're younger, it may be a good idea for us to constantly work towards balancing our diet, ba balancing, you know, hormones, uh, getting plenty of water, pH in our body, you know, like you said, uh, parasites or candida. A lot of people don't check for candida, uh, you know, nope. which is an overgrowth yeah. of, uh, it's almost like a black mold in your body. It's an over overgrowth of yeast, oh, yeah. bad yeast. yeast. You got and it. You can have all these reactions to it and, and nobody even knows that that might be the basis of what's going on. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People don't understand yeast. They think, eh, what's the big deal? Right. Well, the big deal is this. Whenever we eat a lot of sugar, which is the standard American diet, the sad diet, right? Right. <laughs> we, if we eat a lot of sugar, we're going to feed those yeast in our gut. Mm -hmm. The problem with yeast is that when it's growing, it grows roots. Those roots dig into the intestinal lining into blood vessels. And that will cause a little bit of bleeding in the gut. And when you open a blood vessel to the lumen of the gut, oh Lord, you let in all these molecules that do not belong in the bloodstream. And that causes gross inflammation throughout the body. And you'll get symptoms like 
diabetes or <laughs> MS. Type, or, yep, you can get yeah. type two. Di chronic, yep, diabetes. You yeah. can get fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. chronic fatigue. And they don't even look for that kind of stuff. That's why it's just, just no. important to to find a balance with your. Yeah, body. that's what we do in functional medicine. You know, that's that's why there's a whole new medical field called functional medicine because of that. That's great to hear too, because it was almost like you couldn't find uh, more of a holistic, you know, balance of your body unless you went to somebody who was a nutritionalist or, you know, somebody who was yeah. something more holistic. They didn't, they didn't bring it into, you know, actually Western medicine. Right. Until yeah. recently. And it's barely, it's, it's moving in, it's moving in a lot of doctors, a lot of medical physicians are now saying, you know, I'm tired of not getting my patients well. I'm tired of just putting Band-Aids on every wound. I want to get them better. I want to help them. I want their lives better, you know? Right. Well, that's really good to hear. And we really appreciate the work that you're doing to like dig deeper and, you know, really help a bunch of people. We think that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're doing this, this, um, this series of podcasts is so that we can help people become educated because this isn't a one you know, it's just not a one organ disease. It usually no. disease has to do with, you know, a series of things that are going through your body. Right. And even emotionally, sometimes yep. Yep. it can cause things oh, because yeah. if we're carrying a lot of weight or we've got healing from the past or we've got um, blocks in our brain, it stops us from, That's a fact. It, it almost does these blocks. That's why, like, if you're doing hypnosis, you might say, when they describe, they feel like the weight of the world is on their shoulders. They got a pain in their shoulders mm -hmm. because they're carrying something that they need to, to let go of. But exactly. Here's what, you know, I wanted to tell you this too. I think this is so great. Um, and here's a way people can understand what you just said. Most people, well, I don't know, a lot of people know people who have had limbs amputated, right? like in war or car accident or something, they've lost, let's say a person's lost their hand, right? Those people, almost every one of them, 99 plus percent of those patients will have pain in the missing limb. They call that a phantom, phantom pain. pain. Yeah. Yes. Now, what you describe with those past traumas and the weight and all that, the brain has to deal with what it has to deal with and it will find a way to deal with it like with that phantom pain the brain needs the input from that hand to survive because all the sensory input from that hand is stimulating my brain on the opposite side helping to keep it alive you see exactly. yep so if it's not there then my brain's going to tell other areas of it of itself. Hey, you guys start making something so I can get some stimulation over here. I need something. Give me something. Right. And it'll be like, well, how about pain? Yeah, that'll work. Give me the, <laughs> give me pain. I need to live here. Right. Yeah. And that's what happens too with emotional trauma. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just a different manifestation of that. You know, I've been traumatized. I've been abused or whatever it might've been. Right. My brain has to put it somewhere and deal with it. And it's got to use a way that makes sense. Like, for example, you may have seen people like this, but I've seen several. People will come in, usually women, young women, typically, they can't walk or something else. You know, they can't stop throwing up or whatever, right? Mm hmm and, and they'll, like I had one week, in one week, I had three patients who could not walk. And I mean, genuinely couldn't walk, but I could test their muscles and I could clearly see this is not wow. motor. It is not a nerve. It's not none of that. Right. And so I will ask them, would you like to tell me now what happened to you? Nothing happened to me. I'm, nothing. I just can't walk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What happened with all three of those in that one week, and I've seen many, many more, they were raped. Wow. So what the brain did, the brain took that information, something so horrible, inconceivable, cannot possibly make any sense of that, turned it into something physical that does make sense, you right. see? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't walk. I can deal with the humiliation of being in a wheelchair in high school. Okay, I can do that. We, the brains talking to each other, we can do that, right? Okay, yeah, I'm agreeing. We can't deal with what happened. 
but we can't tell people we got raped. That is the greatest of all humiliations. And who, and who knows what else is behind it? Because it can be, it can be like, if I'm in a wheelchair, it'll never happen to me again. Nobody's going to want to yes. want to attack me or like yes. somebody who's, who's overweight, you know, they yep. don't get yep. the back of their mind because maybe they were abused or whatever. If I'm unattractive, nobody will ever, you know, you got it. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the brain. It has to do something with it. It has to do something with it. And so it's still the process. It's still the pathways. It's still the brain doing what brains do, you know, yeah. and we have to, we have to work with it and, and get down to the bottom of it to fix it. You know, it's interesting because in NLP, the, the doctor that I got uh, certified through Dr. Will Horton, I don't know if you've heard about him. He's down in Dennis, Florida, I think it is. Anyway, um, he talks about how uh, our our brain will develop neural pathways for that benefited us maybe at the time. Right. And so one of the things that we do when we work with somebody with NLP is to help to bl block or change that neural pathway, you know, and mm -hmm. even do little tricks. Like imagine that, you know, that's who you were, but you're not that person anymore. Now you've got a roadblock. So when your brain start, your thoughts start to go this direction or your brain goes this direction, imagine there's a roadblock. You've got to, you've got to exit. And now this is who you are. And, and you have to literally change. It's almost like dissolving this highway or this bridge and creating a new one, which is yeah. interesting because in, in your brain, there's so many things that you can do that you'd never know that you could do. I, yeah. I saw a series one time where they put a, they put a blanket over this person's um, shoulder and they had one hand on one side of the wall and one That's hand right. on the other. And they touched it with a feather, you know, the one that yep. was hidden. Mapping, they, you call it. They had a plastic, yeah, they had a they had a uh, rubber one. Yep. And they and they did this over and over again. And then they moved right. the rubber one over. Mm -hmm. And then they would do this on the rubber one and they go, Oh, I feel it. Yeah. And so they even did it like hit it with a hammer. And it's like this person, oh, ow. That's right. You know, yeah. because That's called Brad mapping. Telling them, yeah. Mapping, you said exactly. It's called exactly. mapping, yeah. Which mapping there's a map. We have a map of our entire body on both sides of our brain in the, in the sensory area and in the motor area, we have a map. And the, and the really cool thing is on the right side of the brain where the emotion is, there's a map of the entire world. And based on what you're thinking about, even the universe. Right. It's wow. your map, though. Yeah. It's, it's your a, map. It is yours alone. Right. It's your map. And that map is constantly being redone. Of course, I just moved my hand. My map just changed. The dog just sat next to me. The map just changed. Every, it's constantly in millimicroseconds, constantly changing. So you're remapping everything all at once. That's why they were able to take that rubber hand and make it part of you yeah. by doing those little tricks. It's the neatest thing. That's it amazing. is. Yeah, it's like the brain's telling you, you're still yeah. feeling it. You're still feeling right. it. That's your hand. That's right. right. Very That's why you don't have to think about when, anything when you're driving. Because you've uh -huh. mapped that car as part of you. You're literally Walking. one, yeah. you know? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty incredible. And I do think yeah. there is like something to be said too about when something does happen and maybe you just bottle it up or compartmentalize or whatever it is that you do, your brain wants to have your back. So it's going to find a way to get your attention, whether it's feeling like you can't walk or... right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily benefit you, but it That's creates right. this Awareness. because at that time there was some yeah. sort of need to protect or, yeah. or yeah. deal, you know, yeah. Yeah. when it started, it worked right at the and time it get, protected you yep. from something, right. Or, but as time goes on and it's no longer needed and we're still using it. Because then it starts right. interfering with our lives. And that's what you guys are experts at. That's what counselors do. Right. Yeah. Well, we're not actually counselors. We do the NLP and the hypnosis um, mm -hmm. and help people. So, so we don't delve as much into somebody's past as right. we do give okay. them tools to let go and actually create a different. I see. Well, then yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Or, or a different mindset to be, change that perspective. And when you get that switch, now everything, you have an aha moments like, right. okay, so, so I don't have to feel this way or this doesn't serve me, or I can actually stop doing this and, and go over here. It's just yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's right. 
I think it's very valuable. I, you know, I had, I've had patients who, who are NLP practitioners and they're, it's very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times if we can combine this, you know, the functional medicine, the hypnosis oh, yeah. therapy, yeah, whatever. We do it all the time. I do it yeah. all the time. I send patients to people like yourself quite often, That's you know, good. and counselors, when my patients come, especially patients who have depression, you know, they're coming to me. I call myself the doctor of last resort because they're <laughs> basically that's what I am. <laughs> they come to me because nothing's working. Uh, we can relate always, to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's but, right. But at the same time, when you help them, then you get that, you know, so uh-huh. rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. You mm-hmm. were able to do something that nobody else could do for them. Very rewarding. Questions. Yeah. That's why I never quit studying because I'm constantly finding something that I did not fully understand. And therefore back in the books, you know, let's get, let's get that. So we can understand that part. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. There's a lot to it. A lot to it. So, um, I find what you say about, um, the hormonal effect affecting dementia patients Mm -hmm. and, um, you also work with other conditions, correct? Uh, besides mm-hmm. from dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, mm-hmm. Is there a particular um, condition that you've had a lot of success with that, you know, you've tried these different modalities with? Oh, yeah. We've very few patients that I don't have success with because I'm picky for one thing. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if they, they've got to be willing to make changes. That's true. They've got to, they've got to have a support network around them, you know? Um, but you know, that doesn't mean they I won't take them if they don't have a support network. If a patient comes in and they're severely depressed, suicidal and so forth, I will work with them as long as they will do exactly what I tell them because uh-huh. it's so, so, so critical. Committed. They have uh, to be committed. To, yeah. Yeah. Committed. Yeah. And I always want them to be doing something else like counseling, NLP, you know, EMDR, all, I want them to do that too. Because the things that I do with patients with depression, they're very rapid. So um, in five time? weeks, we, we get tremendous results in five weeks where it would take years of counseling, you know? So they've got to have counseling to deal with this rapidly changing brain you know, that they're, that they have here now, you know, Mm -hmm. um, within a two weeks, the patients are already responding dramatically. And if they've had a lot, like a, let's say child abuse, you know, or they were raped as a child, they didn't know Mm -hmm. they're going to, in my program within two weeks, they're going to start experiencing great anxiety. What is this anxiety? It's the brain saying, I'm opening these doors. Here we go, because it's going to open them. It's going to open them. They'll start having dreams that they don't understand that are, they'll start having feelings. You know, the, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Feelings that are gross or, or, or terribly fearful or painful that make no sense. And that's what the brain is doing. It's saying, okay, we're going to go down this road. All right, let's start opening these doors up and it'll start opening the doors. Come what may, it's going to start because the areas of the brain that can logically manage this, in other words, turn this feeling into a verbal message is getting better quickly. It's healing. Mm -hmm. So what it will do is it'll be, it'll communicate better with the right side. That's just throwing feelings at it, you know, and it'll say, okay, wait, we, whoa. I hear, I, I kind of hear what you're saying, but I don't understand you. We've got to, we got to make this into something that I can verbalize. And once they can, that means those sides are now talking. Whereas if they're not talking, people get these horrible feelings and they make no sense. And what they will do, they tend to do is respond to the feeling with another emotional response. And it's not helpful. Right. It causes them trouble and trouble, you know, it does all kinds of terrible things. But if we can get those two communicating properly, then there's, then there's talking. Then there's, Mm -hmm. I feel this because of that. And that's the aha moment you guys are just saying, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh. that's why I'm doing this. 
<laughs> you see, and th that's where that communication is happening. And once it starts happening with TMS, which is transcranial, you know, we talked about TMS with that, it happens really fast. I got um, you. Just, and we use deep TMS, which is a different kind. It's more of a. Could you explain that a little bit? Yeah. For our yeah. Listeners? Okay. So basically. If you look at a quantitative EEG, you know what an EEG is? It's the squiggly lines. You can right. see the brain patterns, delta, gamma, and all that. You can see that on a, on a computer screen based on the electromagnetic waves that are produced when the brain thinks, right? So if you look at the brain under a live EEG that, that runs through a computer that turns that live EEG into a picture of the brain and you watch it, a patient who's severely depressed or have severe ADHD, which are the same thing, by the way, it's just a different manifestation, same brain abnormality, you'll see the right frontal lobe spinning. And then you can ask them a logic question, like what is 100 minus seven, or what is 93 minus seven and so forth. And you will see very little activity occurring in the left side, or if it even does, the right side is gonna fire so much higher, it's gonna push it down because that's how the brain literally works. One side fires, the other side gets inhibited equally according to how much it fires. And it constantly does that. So we'll see that right frontal lobe firing super, super, super high in a patient with severe depression or ADHD. And there's other things that go along with that too. So TMS, because the brain is an electrical circuit, we can affect it with a magnetic field, okay? So with deep TMS, we are going to take a magnetic pulse, the same power as an MRI machine, and we're gonna focus it down to a small dot. And we're going to stimulate specifically the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, left side of the frontal lobe. Gotcha. We're gonna stimulate the left side of the frontal lobe. Now, why would I do that? because I've got to be able to give an answer to the right frontal lobe that's firing so high. At this point, and when the right frontal lobe is so high, the left side doesn't have a voice, so there's no communication happening. But if I directly stimulate it, like give it a, give it a nice boost, it's gonna start firing much higher so that it can now it go to the right side and say, now you tell me what it is, what is going on here? Talk to me, you know? And they will start talking because now the left side's not so beat up. It doesn't have a voice. It, ca it kind of balances it out. It's like. Yeah, That's what it's doing. It's That's like exactly somebody trying to say something, but they don't have a voice. Yes. So it, you know, it gets frustrating because they're just not able to communicate. Right. That's why you'll see people who, um, who are severely depressed just doing some crazy things. You know, just doing some really really crazy yeah. thing is that the right frontal lobe is making all the decisions in a person's life oh, yeah. right? <laughs> right. it's a bad bad place to be it's the same thing if it was the opposite As i was going to say on the left brain now this was my understanding was that if you're feeling you know anxiety or fear that you're that you're in the left brain it's the future if you're sadness or grief or you know depression whatever it's the it's the past yeah and, and you, so you can be in the left brain so how can you how can you do a brain switch to where, you know, you, you let go of those things and become present, right? Yep. Sometimes coming into the present will create a brain switch. That's, mm -hmm. that's my understanding. Cause we have some exercises where if you can keep that person in the here and now for 90 seconds, it can actually kind of create a little switch. Doesn't yeah. mean it won't go back, but now, you right. know, you can manage this. You can change it by, you know, yep. some of the choices you make or the way you yep. think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. You know, you're actually, you're opening up those pathways. Who knows how long, hopefully for forever right. you know, in those pathways of, so that patient can, or that person can have communication inside their own brain. But TMS does that. That's what it does. It so basically. It shows because, all those. Yes. It, it stimulates that electrical circuit with a magnetic field. Okay. Now, do you, did you guys take physics in high school? A little bit. I did. Okay. I, I'm a lot older than she is. So. Okay, so we, great. Awesome. So you might recall that if you have a live current flowing through a wire, you take a magnet and you put it next to that current, you're going to affect, 
you're going to affect rather the current flow because you've introduced a magnetic field to a flowing current, right? And vice versa, a flowing current of electricity produces a magnetic field, right? Mm-hmm. Remember that from physics? I'm not going to put you on the spot too bad. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But, so if that's true, which it is, the, this is an electrical circuit, which itself produces magnetic fields, which is what we see on EEG. We can then take a magnet, a powerful magnet that can penetrate the skull and go into the brain tissue and affect change in that brain. Good change, because we can, we can vary the frequencies the wavelength of this magnetic field or this magnetic pulse rather to really make effective change, the better that patient. Because we can see, we know what's causing this in the brain. And so we can affect change greatly. And this along with all the other things I talked about is how we get the results we get. There you go. It's crazy and and amazing. Like how the, the use of magnets can be so beneficial because we had a guest come on the show a few months ago. Yeah. And he does biomagnetic code therapy, Mm -hmm. um, but he does it with like the muscular system. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just, I guess I just didn't realize like how impactful magnets can be on the human body. Again. Well, yeah. I mean, here's how, here's how powerful magnets are to the human condition. You may not know this. I didn't know this till about a month ago and I was blown away by it. The moon has a powerful magnetic pull on the, the earth, right? Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Gravitational magnetic pull. Mm-hmm. The moon's power, the, the pull of the moon is so great that the city of New York City, New York City, right. New York City rises and falls 18 inches really when the moon goes by what wow didn't know that. right you mm-hmm. google it you won't believe it i could not believe that was happening and now that nobody knew but they can they measure it they can they can absolutely measure how it's going up and down with the moon <laughs> so how does that affect the people in new york city it affects us all on this planet <laughs> no because the tectonic that explains theory, everything you know? <laughs> We are all affected by the moon, all of us. You know, when I worked in the hospital, when there was a full moon, oh, yeah, we put extra people in that ER because they're coming, especially babies. Right. Babies are coming that night. Yeah. Pregnancies, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's affected amazing. by that magnetic yeah. field. I tell you, if you're, if you're pregnant, you know, when you're anywhere within like a couple of weeks, full moon, it could very well trigger. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I've heard police officers say the same thing, too. Oh, but... yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You so bet. Can I ask you a question with that magnetic stimulation? Um, does it create a permanent change or yeah. I mean, how can it, because I know that it's going through that change, you know, you're stimulating it, mm-hmm. but how does it help it to balance and stay stimulated? Does that make sense? Right. When we, cause we do 26 therapy sessions to get the patient where we need them to be. So the first 20 are the intensives. It's four treatment sessions per week for the first five weeks. Now, you just saw my ugly face the first time just a while ago. (laughs) Now, when you see me again, you're going to remember me. And the reason you remember me is because now this is etched in your DNA. Mm -hmm. It's stored there forever. Mm -hmm. And I mean forever. Right. We, are, we are studying things now called epigenetics where we're beginning to realize emotional states, trauma, so forth that happened to our great, 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 great grandparents. Right, passed down through our genes. Uh-huh. Coming to us. Mm-hmm. Memories are the same thing. It's in your DNA. You're remembering things. Yeah. You're seeing those memories that were there. <laughs> right. It's, and it's you're, just fascinating. Tapping, you're just tapping into the part of the brain that, that influences those memories to come about. And it's all there. It's all right. there. Just like diseases. That's why we can continue to get better and, you know, be able to fight viruses. It's all in that big book called DNA. Uh-huh. So that's how we affect permanent change. Now, that being said, just because I've done that doesn't mean I can put you back out in the fire, you know, and expect you to be fine. 
Right. That's why I'm saying it has to be a period of time that you that the brain can take over and say, I can manage this myself. It, it will. It will. But I tell everybody, you know, you'll be fine un, unless something terrible happens, like a death in the family or a divorce or something horrible, you know. And if it does, all they have to do is come back in and we'll do two or three treatment sessions. And that's usually all it takes. I got gotcha. you. And they're right back to where they were before because the brain remembers it and the brain liked that state. You know, it, the brain's only going to do one of two things in our lifetime all the time. And that's either get better or get worse. Right. It's never on a level plane ever. So we're either getting better or we're getting worse. So when they have trauma again, they're getting worse again, but we can bump that, bring them back, you know, work with them, counseling, you know, whatever they need and get them back. And then they're fine again. They won't need me. They're the greatest thing. And one of my greatest joys is when patients come by and they just say, I wanted to stick my head in the door and say hello. And that I don't need you. I love hearing that. <laughs> I've done my job. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I love that. Yeah. We get good results in a short period of time too. We don't. Generally yes, I, I know. I know. And it does. It, if they can actually, if they can actually see how they can manage their feelings when they do come about, like mm -hmm. they have trauma, yep. that they've been taught how to um, maybe uh, detach from that trauma to put, kind of put it outside of themselves, understand it and in a different perspective, be able to manage it and know that, you know, this isn't permanent. It depends on their belief system too. So you all, you have to work within the confines of that person's belief system and what mm -hmm. they accept and don't accept, but right. they can see that, that this isn't who they are. This is an event mm -hmm. that allows them to kind of be able to manipulate it a little bit and change it. Yeah. yeah that's beautiful. So you can basically look at the same event and reclassify it maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, change. there's some interesting things with that because you can kind of, even with trauma, like you can have them imagine that they're watching it on a movie screen and they're mm -hmm. sitting way back far away from it so it's not so traumatic or maybe that's too close so you might have them looking at the back of their head while they're watching it and play mm -hmm. it through and then play it through in black and white and then run it backwards and kind of take the emotions out of it. Their brain recognizes this happened, but right. it no longer has the same effect. Now they're able to say, okay, I know this. And then, you know, a lot of times what our purpose is, is to get them to now move forward. What do they want to do? How do they want to, you know, conduct the rest of their life? How do they want to um, live and, and, and get excited about your goals and your future and let the yeah. past go? Yeah. Right. That's, that's one of the reasons why I, I discourage retirement. Right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm so against retirement. <laughs> because people, the brain, I'm serious. Yeah. I am. We can't do it. We, we, especially Americans, we, our lives are based on who we are and what we do, you know? It so stagnates you, your, your progress. And you die. You die. I mean, statistically, if you really retire, you got five years. I've and, heard if you're, that and if you're a police officer, it's three. Really? Yes. So they got to have another, another job, another Outlet. purpose in life. If you don't have a purpose, you're a goner. That's just all there is to it. You got to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You should always be pursuing something new, betterment, activity, whether yeah. it be physical, whether it be mental, whether it be spiritual, you know, actively pursue those things. So true. Keep growing. Keep growing. You know, you're either growing or you're dying, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's with anything that's living. That's it. I was even listening to something earlier today about how, um, the reason that people's like physical bodies deteriorate faster when they're older is because their brain isn't taking in any more new experiences. Yeah. And I thought I, I, really I, there is some, there's definitely some, some sense to that. No doubt about it. Cause they start giving up. Yeah. They think, right. well, it's over. This life is over. purpose. Um, it's not over. But it's also, I think nothing stimulating. Right. Yeah. I, th I think it's also the adventure or, or experiencing something new or being open, opening your mind to, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a scripture, which this isn't religious, but there's a scripture that kind of indicates that you need to be um, as, as innocent as a child and to enter into the kingdom of God. Right. So the right. whole theory behind that would be that 
you are curious, that you're constantly learning, that you're open to new experiences, that you don't have all yep. the prejudice or judgment or, or mm -hmm. protection over yourself. So that's kind of the same principle, don't you think? Yeah, I do. And, you know, the unfortunate thing is with the, hum with the brain, it doesn't age. It does not age. You know, know I'm that. telling you right now, I can get up in the morning sometimes and I'm like, OK, good. We're good to go. And I don't have a clue <laughs> that I'm 56 years old. Right. Okay. I have no idea I'm 56 years old. Walk in there and look in the mirror and I'm like, holy crap, who is this? <laughs> That is what so happened? That's so what happened to this guy? Yeah. I felt like that until I started going through menopause. And I'll tell you what, the, there is a difference in the, in the uh, focus, in the um, brain fog. And I know it probably goes back to hormones and maybe amino acids. Um, yeah. You make sure you keep those hormone levels up to 35 years old levels. Seriously. Really? Yes. And make sure you use bioidenticals too, please. Don't use. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Synthetic, right. Yeah. I'm sorry, you use what? Yeah. I miss bioidentical hormones instead of the chemical developed ones. Yeah. You know, like, a, like Primarin? You know what that is? I, I, no, I don't. I've, I've, it's I've, hormones. Can you explain this to our listeners also a little, a little uh, bit? It's, it's hormones that are extracted from horse urine. Primarin. Right. Okay. I've heard of prim Primarin. Is there's progest... Not uh, healthy for humans. Alone. Pregnenolone, there's there's dehydrated endosterone. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's a lot of hormones problems. that we do look at and we test for to make sure they're balanced properly. Very, very important. You know, even as we get older, Is very, this like very important. A blood test or, or yeah. Well, we we prefer saliva testing when it comes to female right. hormones. Testosterone, you can test it with blood. It's better. It's fine. Mm -hmm. but the rest of them, it's better to test them with saliva. Sal sal and, sal and you'd think you'd get more out of the blood, but I know the saliva, you can find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, because saliva gives you more of a pattern over time mm -hmm. because you have to give us samples throughout the day, whereas blood is one snapshot in a moment. Right. You know? And it's not bound. Mm -hmm. We don't know what hormones you're utilizing when we look at your blood. It's just floating around in there. We don't know what you're doing with it, but with saliva – You've already done something with it. Right. We can actually analyze what you're doing with it. You see, so it's a better test for the hormones. And so I if encourage I you. To, if I wanted to come in and get tested for my hormone level to see mm -hmm. what I'm, where my balance is, where I'm out of balance, what I needed, would I be able to do that? You know, like through the mail, because I know sometimes you can do saliva tests through the mail. But you said testing throughout the day. So what? Yeah. I well, well, basically, you know, you probably have functional medicine doctors in Fort Walton, right? Or somewhere nearby, hopefully. You're so valuable and important. We want to come see you. <laughs> okay. Well, you could definitely do that. <laughs> we, give you, we give you a kit. Um, if you want to just, if you're concerned only about those types of things, you would probably see um, the other two girls in the office. One's a nurse practitioner. The other one, they're both nutritional therapists. Right. And they both work with me and you would see them. And they work with me and they come to me and say, what do you think? Da, 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 you know, and we would give you a kit that you take home and you basically spit in the vials and you put it in the freezer and then you will ship it out overnight to the lab. And then the lab will test that and tell us exactly what's going on with your hormones. Right. But that's after you see us, because, you know, through the history that we do, it may not be hormones. That's the problem. It could be something that you never even thought about. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. That's some amazing stuff. And are there any other, um, I guess, conditions um, that you've been able to successfully treat that you see a lot, you know, for listeners that may be, you know, dealing with something where your type of treatment would be a benefit to them? Yeah. Um, well, because we do functional medicine too, it's almost anything. <laughs> if it's a chronic disease, that you're not getting help with and it just isn't getting anywhere. We, that's what we do. I gotcha. When it comes to the brain, also the brain is what I really loved the most, but because of that brain, I had to learn functional medicine too. So that's why we're doing both now. And so, you know, like I said, if it's something that is not getting better, then we're the ones you probably need to see. Right. And if we can't figure it out, we'll make sure somebody can. Right. So if for anybody who might be listening, how, how might you be different 
than other functional medicine uh, practitioners or physicians? My back, my neurology background. Gotcha. I think that's really what sets me apart. And the fact that, you know, I treat emotional conditions, brain based, um, and I treat the brain. That's what sets me apart. Very you good. Know, yeah, you go to a functional medicine, functional medicine doctors are great at hormones, or at least they should, they're supposed to be. Right. But when it comes to the brain and other abnormalities like that, they don't know that. And they don't need to know that. They're not, that's not what they do. But because I'm a neurologist and functional medicine, that's, that's why I do those two. That's where you differentiate. Yeah. So if people yeah. wanted to work with you, how would they be able to get in touch with you? They just call. 251 597 8787. And if they want to look up your information, Mind Performance Center.com. Awesome. And they can text me through the website too if they need to. Oh, perfect. Okay. Very convenient. <laughs> Uh, Well, we just want to thank you so much for coming on the show. You've provided us with so much information that I think will really help some people who are searching for answers. Right. Yeah. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. And we do have a one last little segment where we ask you some fast, fun questions so our listeners can get to know you on a different level. And uh, we want to know, are you an early bird or a night owl? Early bird. Early bird. That's five been o'clock. the answer lately. The go-to answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> four thirty, yeah, five o'clock usually. I'm up. What is the one song that can hype you up no matter when and where you listen to it? Oh wow. That's a good song. That's a mm-hmm. um probably the um Danger Zone. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, top <laughs> <down>. <laughs> Do you want to sing yeah. it for us? No. <laughs> and uh, what is lighting you up the most in life right now? Oh goodness, my family. Good for you. That's and good my work, my faith in God. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And if you could leave our listeners with one nugget of wisdom from today's conversation, what would that be? From Dr. Daniel Amen: Change your brain, change your life. I, yeah, Dr. Daniel, I mean, I've looked at some of his stuff because I've, I've been interested in the brain too, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he changed that. Hypnosis too? Do what? Doesn't he also do hypnosis? Oh yeah. He's a psychiatrist. Hypnotherapist. Mm-hmm. And, and I think his wife, he with his wife, they came up with some, uh, new nutritional diet that also helps to. Yeah. They're trying. <laughs> Well, we just want to thank you so much for coming on the show and taking this time with us. We're just very grateful and very honored. And um, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Rise and Shine It's Hypno Time podcast. If you found some value in this episode and enjoyed it, please consider liking, subscribing, and giving us a five-star review. Most people may not know that interacting with our content and our channel helps us to continue the work we're doing and reach more people. And we just want to thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for being such a loyal listener. And don't forget to tune in next week and every Tuesday for the latest episode of the Rise and Shine is Hypno Time podcast with Dina and Suzanne. See you next week.